Hello everyone, this is Jack. Well, in this video, I'm going to share five gardening lessons that my great-grandfather taught me. My great-grandfather lived in India in a state called Punjab. He was born in 1912 and he passed away in 2008. He was 96 years old when he passed away and he lived a very fulfilling life. He was very content, never cared about money. He lived a life connected with nature. And I never met anybody that was as carefree as him, as content and as happy as him. So let's start with those gardening lessons. My great grandfather, he always talked about caring for the soil. Now, as a fertilizer, he always used manure. The great source of manure in India is cow manure. They also keep water buffalo, so there's water buffalo manure as well. Over here, I use cow manure along with horse manure that I get from my neighbors. So that's a really good source to add organic matter into your soil, add nutrients into your soil. So basically, what I also do is I make my own compost. So I use green material and brown material to make my own compost. And what a cow does is kind of the same. It does that in one day, but I do that in three months. My great grandfather had a pile of cow manure, which he would keep adding to the back of the pile and keep taking from the front of the pile. He did that to age the manure. Now I use cow manure and horse manure that I get from my neighbors and I age it for nine months. My neighbors age it as well. And then we incorporate it into the ground. And what happens after that is the microorganisms love it. Worms love it. So it makes the soil living. I have a separate video on how to make your soil living as well. So check that out if you're interested. I grew up in Punjab as well. And I moved to the United States with my family when I was 14. And I got to spend quite a bit of time with my great grandfather and it was amazing time. And he always talked about tomatoes, cucumbers, watermelon, and cantaloupe that taste absolutely amazing. The taste that you cannot find anymore. And I would ask him, why is that you can't find that taste anymore? And he would always say, it's because of the use of chemical fertilizer. The use of chemical fertilizer began in India in 60s and 70s. That's when the farmers heavily started using chemical fertilizers. The chemical fertilizers boost the growth of the plants, makes the fruit and vegetables bigger but dilutes the taste. He would say, this is not the natural way the fruit and vegetables want to grow. So when I first started gardening in 2008, when I first bought my house and he had passed away, that gave me enough motivation to start growing my own fruits and vegetables so I can replicate the taste that he was talking about. So I started looking into organic gardening, started to make my own compost. The first two years were brutal. I couldn't grow anything. My house had compacted clay soil in the backyard. After building the new house, you know, they would compact the soil and it was so hard to grow anything in there. But after creating my own compost, after mixing it into the soil, making raised beds, I was able to grow a variety of fruits and vegetables and they tasted amazing. That's when I knew what he was talking about. When he said, you don't taste tomatoes like this anymore. The second thing my great grandfather always talked about is that the farmer only needs three friends, earthworms, ladybugs and honeybees and now i understand the importance of why earthworms make organic fertilizer in ground honeybees go flower to flower and help in pollination and ladybugs they are the natural pest control ladybugs eat aphids white flies and variety of insects that would otherwise hurt our plants my great grandfather never used any pesticides in his garden and he gardened up to when he was 80 years old. I was too little back then to see his garden. So I, all I got was to hear from him about his garden and it stuck to me until this day. My great grandfather loved cauliflower and he stopped eating cauliflower in the 80s. He would not even touch cauliflower because he saw how much pesticides were being used to grow cauliflower. He would say, I would only eat cauliflower if it's not sprayed with poison. And he lived a really healthy and natural life and he never had any health issues. He did not have heart issues, no blood pressure, no diabetes. He lived a really fulfilling and healthy life. The third thing my great grandfather always talked about was companion planting. He would say he would grow garlic with almost anything. In winter, he would grow garlic with peas and potatoes and he would harvest potatoes and peas and leave garlic in the ground because garlic matures until June. And he would plant tomatoes and eggplants in March and April with the garlic is already in his beds. Garlic is a natural pest repellent. Now I understand why he used garlic so much. And we use garlic a lot in our cooking too. He said when he would pull out garlic from his garden in May and June, he would plant basil in place, which works really well with tomatoes and peppers, which would already be in ground in March and April. He would also plant corn and beans together. He would always say certain plants work really well together while others don't. He said plants are like humans too. Sometimes you get along with somebody, Sometimes you don't. If you don't, just keep your distance. Now, the fourth thing he always talked about was crop rotation. He said, 
give the ground some rest. Don't keep planting the same thing over and over again in the same area. Plant something different. He didn't know anything about NPK back then, but he knew that plants drive their nutrients from soil and soil has to have enough nutrients to supply to plants. So if you keep planting the same plant in the same place, it will keep depleting the same kind of nutrients in the soil. So he would plant mustard and peas in winter where he would plant corn and tomatoes in summer. He never planted corn and tomatoes together accompanying plants because they don't like each other because they feed on the same nutrients. So he had that knowledge somehow intuitively or passed down from his ancestry to know about nutrition of plants. Well, now we know mustard, peas and beans, they are nitrogen fixers for soil. So when you plant these, they actually add nitrogen into the ground. And then afterwards, you can plant tomatoes and tomatoes use a lot of nitrogen and potassium and they grow really nice and big tomatoes. The fifth thing he always talked about was having a cash crop and he loved sunflowers which he called Suraj Mukhi which means facing the sun. That's what it means in Punjabi language. And he would grow a lot of sunflowers in between his garden as well. And it makes sense. Sunflower produce a lot of sap and a lot of insects such as aphids, they love sunflowers. They'll, they will all gather up onto the sunflowers and guess what you will find on sunflowers? Ladybugs. So ladybugs look for sunflowers because they know that's where they're going to find the aphids. And I later learned that sunflowers are also beneficial in many other ways. They get rid of toxins from the soil, they feed the bees, bees love sunflowers, they get to have nectar and pollen from sunflowers and sunflowers also feed the birds so the birds don't eat our vegetables and fruit. So now I grow sunflowers in my strawberry patch. I used to have lots of aphids and worms in my strawberries but not anymore. They are on the sunflowers so the birds go to the sunflowers they will eat the worms and the aphids and the ladybugs would go to the sunflowers and they will devour the aphids as well. So I see a lot of ladybugs on my sunflowers and I don't see any aphids and worms on my strawberry plants as much as I used to. My great-grandfather was a really wise person and he lived a really fulfilling life. Now that has motivated and inspired me to live a life in his footsteps and that's why we bought this farm. We bought a 20 acre farm which is certified organic. We want to live life in compliance with nature, in hand to hand with nature. Like him, I want to live a really content and natural life. I want to grow organic produce, encourage others to grow organic, and feed organic produce to the community around us. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in another video.